All right. Hello, everybody. This is Carl White broadcasting today from the secret headquarters of the Mortgage Marketing Animals, and you are listening to Loan Officer Freedom, number one podcast for loan officers in the world. And thanks to you guys for forwarding all this stuff, uh, these episodes for, to your friends and inviting people to this and asking great questions. And um, so I've got on the, uh, on, the, uh, on the podcast with me today, I think everybody knows who this guy is, Ralph Watkins, who's the guy that actually got me in the mortgage business. Uh, great to see you, Ralph. Hey, hey, great to be here. And I love that we always start out in the secret location. Ooh. Well, it, 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 it is a secret location, man. It is. It is. You got to go through a gate and climb under a fence. And, uh, yeah, that, yeah. and that's what I have to do. And I own it. Right? <laughs> so, uh, so, uh, so, uh, so you're listening to the right episode, episode if you're looking for the one that talks about the one thing. The one, the one thing, baby. What, what does that mean, Ralph? When we say for loan officers, what is your one thing? What, what, like, what are we going to talk about today? You know, the, the, the one thing, the one thing that makes you the most amount of money, because of all, we all do, we all do all kinds of stuff, right? But most of it is, is, is filler. It's just noise that goes on. It's stuff that, you know, it, it, it's not making the money. There is one thing we do above everything else that makes us more money than, than all the other tasks. And that's, and the beautiful thing is it's like Curly in uh, City Slickers. You gotta yeah. Got to find the one thing. Yes. <laughs> the one was, thing, right? Good, good, it's it's was, not the same for everyone. Yeah, yeah. So, and, and I think a lot of people, so like when we go around the country uh, and do these loan officer training courses that you and I do, um, you know, we'll ask that question from stage. You know, what is the number one thing that makes you the most money? And, and, it's, and, and, and I would say 90% of the room does the same thing you and I did when the person first asked us the question. Is kind of look up in the air and go, well, dang, I've never really thought about that. I'm not sure what it is. Yeah, what the heck? And uh, so, so first of all, if you're one of those people, like Ralph and I was, that kind of looks up in the sky, go, man, that's a darn good question. I don't know what it is. You're you're in good company. Most people don't know what that one thing is. So then we go, well, of course we're not having as much success as we could. Even no matter how great of success you're having, I don't care if you're closing a hundred loans a month. It could, you're still not having as great of success as you can, as you deserve to, if you don't know what your one thing is, so you can do more of it. And, and the one thing is, is really, it's, it's deeper than most people think. Because I think the first time I heard you do this, I'm thinking, boop, take applications. There you go. If I'm taking applications, I'm making money. No, the money's already been made by the time you're taking the application. Let, let's, let's talk about that for a minute, because I, yeah. I think that's a big deal. So I would say, like, when we do ask that question across the country, you know, we get things like, let's take, let's say, take application. I hear that a lot. I Go hear closing. go, going to closings. Yeah. What would you say? You said something. I said going to closings. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So going to closings. Uh, I would say um, marketing to my database. Yes. Which that's is a big a one. Thing. A good, all these are good things. So marketing to database. Meeting realtors, that's, that's one we hear a lot. Meeting realtors, that's, a, that's one. But while all those are good things, it's not the one thing. I, explain why taking applications, closings, marketing to our database, meeting with realtors, meeting with the listing agent. Yeah, uh, on yeah. property, every, time I get, every time I get a deal, I meet with the listing agent. A lot of people say that's their one thing. So... And, and, and at first glance, you might go, yeah, that is the one thing, but it's not. Explain, explain what we mean here. So I sort of alluded to this a second ago. I said, well, by the time you take the application, the money's already been made. So what do you mean by that? And it's, well, the, because there was something that happened that set up the taking of that application. Mm. Well, first, first I had to talk to the person on the phone. First I had to, you know, the, you know okay, but something made that happen. Well, first I, you know, so you, you take this all the way back. Something made that happen and something made that happen and something made that happen. So what's the first thing? So for instance, like if we were saying, if, if we were to say going to closings is my one thing, man, that, that I make more money by doing that, uh, going to the closing. And so that's, we, that's like the fat lady singing. That's the yeah, end of the show. That's, and, 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 uh, uh, and, and that's not where the money is. It's, it's like, it, it's, it's like to go to that closing, 
you had to get the referral to, or you had to get that lead to close it. Yes. Well, to get that lead, I, I got it from meeting with the listing agent of, of, of the last deal. Awesome. Yes. What happened that you met that listing agent? Like, how did you meet that listing agent? Well, I closed the Jones file. Awesome. How did you get the, how'd you get the lead for closing the Jones, the Jones file? file. <laughs> I got it from Realtor Jill. Awesome. How did you meet Realtor Jill? I, 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 I met her for coffee. Awesome. How did you meet her for coffee? And then start asking for the business. I, I, I called her. Ah. Mm. Yeah, the further back you go, the closer you get to the one thing. Yeah, that's right. I called her. The closer you get to the one thing, I, I picked up the phone and I called. So there's an exercise, you know, when, uh, you, gosh, years ago, we, 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 I, I got up and I, I was talking about the 80-20 rule. And, you know, in, that, in the 80-20 in the rule, uh, it's applied in all sorts of ways. But the 80-20 rule says, you know, in, 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 in any kind of sales organization, you know, 20% of the people make 80% of the sales. And really, it's, it's more lopsided than that. It's probably 90-10 or 95-5, and five, but 80-20. Um, but, you know, th there's other areas, you know, because uh, it's, it's Pareto's law. And, they, you know, when you plant a bunch of seeds, hey, 20% of the seeds produce 80% of the crop. And, and in your relationships, 20% of the people you know bring you 80% of your joy. By the way, 20% of your people bring you 80% of your grief mm. <laughs> as well. 80% of your clients are, 20% are, of your clients give 80% of your headaches. You know, mm. so there's all, each of these things spawns another whole conversation. You know, but as, as we're doing this, you said, okay, quick, well, let's come up with a list of all the things that happen in your office. All, everything that happens on a daily basis. And, and so... Uh, you know, for our listeners here that have, have been through some of these other calls with us, you've heard us talk about the acts of freedom. And, and so on the acts of freedom, this is really kind of, this is how we de help to determine our one thing. Because when you look at all the things you do on a daily basis, you go, okay, now, if you could only do one of those things to the exclusion of everything else, what would it be? And there's no wrong answer because somebody's, somebody's one thing is different from somebody else's one thing. So, um, but if, if there's a, there's a, a, a process that we go through and, and really it all comes down to, you know, everything that as loan officers, everything we do as loan officers, it all falls into one of two categories. We're either doing things that make the phone ring or things that happen after the phone rings. You think about it and anything you do during the day either makes the phone ring or happens after the phone rings. And we have a real simple tenant. The loan officer should really only be doing things that make the phone ring. In a perfect world, and hey, I'll admit it's difficult to get there, but a lot of our, you know, a lot of our students and clients have. They, they've actually gotten to that point where they've offloaded all the stuff that happens after the phone rings. Somebody else does all that stuff. It's like, what would your day be like if you, if you only, if you could, if you just got to do things that just made the phone ring and somebody else did everything else? Hmm. You know, so how do you, how do you identify those things? So well, how, you know, how, how, how do you identify those things? So like if we go, cause like, so like, you know what? But yeah. Let's, let's identify, like, how do you identify what makes the phone ring? Cause honestly, that's where the money's made. And then let's talk about what are the things that keep that from happening for most loan officers? Sure. Because if we can, if we can, if we can find out, Hey, what's keeping that from happening for you, then you can just do more of that one thing. So the first thing we have to do, so step one is identify what is your one thing? What is the yeah. one thing? And you know, it's a crying shame, and it's both for me and you too, Ralph. It's a crying shame that nobody ever pointed out to us, hey, Carl, hey, Ralph, gee, let's find out what your number one thing is that closes most of the loans for you. And, oh, I don't know, let's do more of that. <laughs> more of that? Yeah. Oh, my gosh, what a but, concept. Honestly, it, and, and it wasn't their fault because they weren't taught that way either. Right, so no. it's not the, the people that were kind enough and that you and I are both extremely grateful for, for getting both first you and then me and the mortgage, we're, we're incredibly grateful. They never, they never talked about this stuff. And it's, it's, we look back at it now and I go, and I'm not saying this in disrespect, you know, but like, what were they nuts? You know, same thing where, when we first started, were we nuts for not figuring this stuff out? So, so, so first of all, identify what is your number one thing? So, the, the, 
the way to do that is really that awesome exercise that you had people do at that. I think we we're in Gatlinburg or someplace. Uh, you, you create a list of everything that happens in your office. You come in, you got to turn on the lights. You can turn on the coffee maker, turn on the copy machine, right? So there's all this kind of stuff that you do to get ready. Then you pull up your computer and you start going through emails or you look, you go to your website and you, you look for leads or things that came in. Here's all this, all this list of stuff that happens. See, now this is awesome. Uh, because you, you start thinking about it. And it's like, man, there's all sorts of stuff. No, you, people think, no, no wonder I have a hard time getting to this. Look at all this other superfluous stuff that happens, things I got to do. So once you have this list done, uh, you know, I'll, I'm talking to, to, to loan officers all day long. And what I say is, once you get this list, um, you know, what, what we actually do is you think about the people on your team. And, and then you go through for all these tasks and you're right, like next to the task, write the name of the person on the team who's responsible for that task, right? Cause maybe somebody else answers the phone or somebody else turns on the coffee maker or somebody else does whatever, you know, and you're, you're working on elements of the loan or, or, or things like that. Once you get that done, it's a really cool exercise just to create a little spreadsheet and, and put a column at the top for each person on the team and then take all those tasks that you had there and put all the, the, the tasks for each person under their name. And instantly, now you've got a list of everything that's going on in your office organized visually by who's doing what. And, and this, this clarity comes flying into view. Mm. It's like, oh, my gosh, look at all these things I'm doing. So I, people go. I, I, I got a question for you. Yeah. What about for the, I'm going to say, and I'm just going to, I'm going to just pull this number out of the air, but it's probably pretty close. What would you say to the 80% of loan officers that are the one man band or the one woman band? They go, Hey, I hear you talking about, you know, what's my number one thing and don't do everything else. And uh, the thing that's holding me back is I'm doing a activity, which brings in the loans, which would be things like uh, uh, making the phone, get, ways of getting leads. Like it's not yeah. calling on the leads it's getting the leads for me to call on. Yeah. And, for most of us, that's either going to be social media marketing or referral partner marketing for most of us, for most of us, right? No right or wrong way for, for most of us. So I, I go get that activity. I, I go do that activity. Uh, I go meet with my realtors. I do the coffee appointments. I do the Facebook ads. I'm doing follow-up, right? I get all that. And now I get these leads. I call on those leads and I take their app and now I got to go chase conditions. Duh. And when I'm chasing conditions, I can't, which is a good thing to do. Got to do it, man. Somebody's got to do it. But, but, but now, else. but now I'm not doing the A activity, which brought in the loans. I'm doing the B activity, which is the reactionary of closing that loans. And when I'm doing that, I'm not doing any of the A. If I'm a one man band or one woman band and I, and I get all what you're saying, Ralph, what do I do? What would you suggest that person? Here's what I tell people. Um, if that's you, one of your very first tasks is to figure out how to find someone to offload the non the, the fulfillment type tasks to do because mm -hmm. you're, you're either making the phone ring or you're or you're doing fulfillment mm -hmm. make all the money's in making the phone ring but all the time is in fulfillment 97 percent of the stuff that happens on a loan file is fulfillment right and so we're so mired in fulfillment we don't have time to do sales so we got to figure so, out so, how it, so that's kind of like saying like, like the, I'm sitting here looking at a photo, photocopy over here on my right-hand side. Yeah. The lady that sold me that photocopier is not the same person that comes and fixes it when it needs repair. Exactly. Because if she was spending 97% of her time fixing these things, then she's only selling 3%. She makes less money and the company sells less photocopiers. It's just, a, it's a special kind of stupid to do that, right? It's exactly right. So when people go, well, I, I don't have a person to offload this stuff to, so what do I do? You know what? You would be very well advised. And look, I, people go, what are you nuts? Just hear me out. Go to your company and say, hey, listen, I'm, I'm, on, I'm on 125 bips. I'm on 100 bips. Heck, I'm on 90. I, what, I don't care where you are. Maybe you're a bank and you're, it's really, you're down there, okay, in terms of, right? What can you do to get another person that you can offload some of that fulfillment to. And if you can trade 10 or 15 or 20 bips and have them use that money to get somebody else in to help you, that's a very good place to start. Yeah. You go, oh, yeah, I can barely pay my bills. That's because you don't have help. Yeah. You know, it goes back to you, uh, and, and people probably heard us say this a hundred times, 
you want 100 percent of a grape or 50 percent of a watermelon exactly right yeah exactly right so as you as you you've created this list with these columns of things now you know what everyone on your team is doing let's look for things to offload people well what what should i offload well it's actually pretty simple and it, by the way if if you're that one man band the the list is your, your names on everything okay so what you do now is look at all the stuff that you've written under your name all the tasks that you're doing do this exercise grab a highlighter go down that go down that list of stuff under your name and ask yourself this question for every every task you see under your name does this task make the phone ring or does it happen after the phone rings so so for example so let, so for example uh, talking with my clients with files already in progress that happens after the phone rings after the phone uh, let's see like uh, uh, getting supplies after, uh, after, 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 after the, the phone rings after the phone rings uh, let's talk about uh, maybe talking to the underwriter after the phone rings uh, learning uh, are going to closings clearly after the phone rings yeah and can we agree that putting out the fires is probably at least 70% of the fulfillment part? Totally. Like, like bank statements and chasing conditions. And so Ralph, what would you say to that person that says, yeah, but I'm the originator. I need to be the one asking uh, my, my clients, my, my borrowers. I need to be the one that's uh, calling them and asking for the bank statements. And I need to be the one calling and updating my referral partners. Uh, what yeah. would you say to that? Great question. And I used to sort of, candy coat this thing and I just got I got over the candy coating part I'll just say flat out that is a lie from the pit of hell yeah it is not the truth it does in fact not only does it not need to be you it shouldn't be you because that's a fulfillment activity not a money making activity. yeah but they, they they're used to me they want to talk to me no here's what they want they want the dang loan to close that's what they want they just want the money they want the loan to close without hassle. And the reason that they believe they need to call you is guess what? You've trained them that way. Hmm. We all did. We got started. Hey, I'm your man. You call me. I'll call you back in 10 minutes. You need something. I'm on it. We trained them that we are the person. And so why should we be surprised when they call us all the time asking for stuff? That's what we've told them to do. So, I mean, the, the, a beautiful strategy of this, and you think about it, it's, it's, it's just amazingly simple. Instead of branding us, brand your team. I don't even have a team. They don't know that. Mm. My team is awesome. Mm. You start planting the seeds of a team that you have helped. You go, listen, I'm really good at, this, at stuff like this and getting to meet you and shaking hands and kissing babies. I'm good at that. When it comes to the file, though, man, my back office, they're the ones that really make it rock in there. Mm. And That's a great point, because – Cause like, again, I'm sitting here looking at this photocopier, uh, when it breaks, uh, if I call Debbie, who's the one that sold it to me, I'm going to get her voicemail in all likelihood. And I, I, I don't want Debbie to fix my copier. I want my copier fixed. Yeah. And, and, and when she sold me this thing, she told me that her repair people were amazing. So I'm not sitting there going, when's that Debbie going to answer the phone and, and get up here and show, I go, no, I'm calling the amazing. And they are amazing by the way. Right. They are amazing. Yeah. Or, or I, I just got the, a mental image that like if you have any doubts of this, uh, those of you that, that are kind enough to listen to us today, if you have any doubts of this, if your car is broke, your car is broke and, and you're getting ready to go on vacation tomorrow and you run it into the dealership or your repair person and uh, Jill, Jill uh, is the person that checks you in. Like you take your yes. car down there and Jill checks you in. And then later this afternoon, I'm calling to see if it's done. because they told me it was going to be done. So I call and they say, well, one of two things, either A, uh, Jill's on her lunch break. You can wait till she gets back. Or B, I can let you talk to her team, who's the ones that actually uh, fix the car. Uh, no, I want to hear it from Jill's lips. <laughs> right. right. I'll, I'll, I'll wait. I'll wait, I'll wait and, and tell my family <laughs> we're not sure if we're going on vacation yet because I don't want to talk to Susan, who's the one that actually fixed the car or Bob, the one that actually fixed the car. I, 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 I only want to talk to Jill. Right. right. That, that would never enter my mind. It was like, uh, well, well, sure, let me just speak to the mechanic that actually did it, whoever he or she is. Right. I'm, I'm, I'm totally cool with that. Cause In Jill fact, we would me, all go, well, who else can I talk to? She's not there. Who else can I talk to? It's a natural thing. Yeah. Except in this business. Except in this business. So it, it just, it's just funny how that works. So, so, uh, so number one is 
what is the number one thing that makes you money and source that down to, to what is that? And, and again, for most of us, that's going to be, and I'm just thinking off the top of my head, that's either going to be uh, uh, social media marketing for some people. Uh, it's going to be referral partner marketing, which might look like teaching classes, uh, uh, picking up the phone and meeting for coffee. What, one on one meetings. Classes, meetings. You got to follow yeah. up with those people. I mean, that's, it's not the teaching of the class. It's the follow up. is where the follow up. Just FYI. Uh, for, for branch managers, it might be recruiting, right? That, that might be their number one thing, recruiting. Um, that's but like, that's kind of it. Like it's uh, keeping in touch with your database. Uh, even though that happens after the phone rings for the first time to get the ring phone to ring a second time, uh, marketing database is a very good activity. And I would say for a lot of people that that could be your number one thing. Like once you get a database good. of about, you know, 500 to a thousand people that, that it kind of transitions that that could be your, it's not to start with, but as time goes on, uh, that, that, that might end up being your, your, uh, your number one thing, or maybe even less than that, maybe down to 300 or so. A good point. Know, but... that, that's a good point. That's a good point. It, for a lot of people like, and, and maybe we can talk about this in the next episode, like the Tuesday updates, when we call and do the Tuesday updates with our call to action to get even more loans that way. Oh for, my gosh. Oh, yeah. For, for a lot of, for a lot of loan officers, there is no cold calling, by the way, you know, we're not talking about cold calling. We're talking about calling those people that you're already working with to get even more business. Uh, that might end up being your number one thing. Um, but, but you get the idea. What it's, what it's not, what's not your number one thing is checking your emails, talking with clients of, in progress, collecting docs, putting out fires, even running yeah. DU or LP, uh, even that what needs to be done. And again, you, in, in your office, it might be you doing it. And I'm not saying it's a wrong thing, but what we're saying is that happens after the phone rings. And if it happens after the phone rings, it's, it, let me tell you something. You're not going to close 40 loans a month uh, running DULP. Not going to happen. That's uh, correct. Yeah. Not bad. By the way, I, ju I just have to tell you, and I hope he doesn't mind me calling him out here. Uh, our dear friend, uh, Corey Kavanuski, uh just had another uh, record month. His own <laughs> personal production, his own personal production, uh, this month, and this is not the hot season there. This is, as we're recording this today, yeah. uh, this is the off season, All right? This is the off season. Uh, uh, it was 14 million, his own personal <laughs> production for the month. Isn't that crazy? I, well, when you say Corey had another record month, that's saying something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because that boy knows from records. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I mean, he, he, he's wow. been amazing. Congratulations. He's, he's, what, a, what an awesome guy. Way to yeah, go, Corey. Yeah, he, he, he's gone. So when we met him, I mean, he was already doing pretty good. Don't get me wrong. He was doing, he was doing you know, he's an awesome guy. So I'm, I want to make sure I give all the credit to him because that's where it's due. Because, uh, you know, we might have mapped stuff out for him, but he's the one that, that did it, right? He's the one that, that followed through with that plan. Uh, when we met with him, I think uh, when he joined up with us, I think he was at like an 8.3 million, uh, yeah. which is a great number. Well, these, are, these are big numbers. He, he's come close to double that already. And it's, it's, it's easy to double from four to eight loans a month, right? That part's easy. As the numbers crank up a little bit, it's, it's kind of like, it's easy for a car to double its speed from 10 to 20 miles an hour, from 20 to 40. Yeah. When you start talking about going from 100 to 200, uh, it, it, it's, it becomes way more challenging at that point. Considerably it, harder. Considerably yeah. hard, exponentially harder. And this guy's gone uh, since we met him from, from I think it was 8.4 million to to this month hitting 14 million. That's not his team, by the way. That's, that's just that, him. That's him. Well, it, I mean, he has a team, but that's not no, his no, own no. officers. That's he's the only LO. Yeah. Yeah. As he's, he's the only LO processors right, right, right. and loan partners. Yeah. yeah. Helping him to do that. Yeah. But, what, I mean, what, 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 what do you want to guess that Corey doesn't know what his number one thing is? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah. He knows his number one. He thing. knows exactly. His, in fact, and his number one thing, he, he, he doesn't have like a, a bunch of number one things. It's a very narrow, so, which is actually a great question. When you say like your number one thing, and I get it, there's always going to be a couple, uh, you know, that are, that are, that are, that's, that's part of the number one thing. I, I would say like, typically, would you say it's like maybe two or three things? Would you kind of oh, like, yeah. it's, it's a very, very narrow uh, range of things. Yeah. So, so, so like, like it might be like, like teaching classes, but it's not actually the teaching of the class. It's the following up on the phone calls to that class, and then it's the meeting with those people face to face. After you do the class, after you do the phone call, the face to face meeting. And it, wait, it goes even beyond there. It's after you do the meeting. It's the 
every week phone calls to, to the fun ones, to the cool ones, to the ones that you want to work with and that want to work with you. So really that's that one strategy is a four part series. You, you, you teach a class, you, uh, you, you call them up, you meet with them, and then you do follow up calls with them. Teaching yeah. classes puts people into the funnel. Yeah. What teaching classes does is take people from being cold, cold relationships or cold leads to warm leads. So then when you follow up, you've delivered value. They know who you are and it's much easier to get them to meet with you. Yeah. I, you know, I, so I, that, I totally definitely agree. that process. So one, one last thing on that. So uh, on Corey for, for 14, you know, there's, there's a lot of people and rightly so who come, coming into the business, they felt like if they did that in a year, that would be a great year. And it, and it would be for a lot of people. And it would be. So yeah, it's indeed. just, that's just a great, it's interesting perspective, great economy of scale. So congrats, yeah, not, Corey. Not, not for Corey though. Yeah. Uh, just as an FYI, I, you know, you know I better not. I, I was going <laughs> to, I, I was, well, I just, I mean, without he's, doubt. He's just an awesome dude. I really like the guy. He's, a, he's yeah. just a really awesome dude. Um, he, he was just, I, you know, I'm not going to go into it because that, that might be a number. He, he's building a new house and he shared with me what it's, uh, what this oh. new house is worth, but I, 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 I don't have permission to share that. So, Anyway, it's it's pretty freaking awesome. It'll I, be I, nice. The, the guy, yeah, the guys, uh, the guy knows where the gas goes. He saves his money. He invests his money wisely. Uh, just a really sharp guy. But anyway, I, I didn't mean to go on about uh, Corey, but uh, but he's certainly worthy of some attention. He's just a really nice guy. So, uh, well, brother, I see we're kind of up on that. You know, you know what I want to do the next episode episode on uh, Ralph. What's that? You thinking, man? This this one this one's kind of just been. If I can say, it's kind of been burning my butt here a little bit, right? Um, yeah. Begging for business. Oh, for business, like uh, how to how to not beg for business. How to not beg. Yeah, and and I, I, that's going to be our next episode. So that's our leader. Hey, but if you're if you're listening on this call today and you want you want some help going over figuring out what is my number one thing and maybe how to maximize that and 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 on this team building, how do you decide who does what? Uh, would love to help you with that. Uh, we do that as a courtesy. Uh, if you go to loan officer strategycall.com loanofficerstrategycall.com uh, and if you're watching this on our on our page there's a link there somewhere in the show notes there might be a link but it's loanofficerstrategycall.com uh, we'd love to help you with that helping you pick out your number one thing it's a good thing to, to brainstorm uh, at the end of that call you know uh, uh, you're, you're absolutely 100% welcome to take all that information and, and work the plan on your own totally totally cool uh, you might ask us, hey, could you guys help us out with that? We can talk about that too. But either way, totally, totally cool. This is not a credit card call or anything like that. So uh, yep. just people have, people have changed mine. and Ra Ra Somebody changed Ralph's life. Life changed mine. I want to continue on with the ripple effect and any way that we can help you with yours. And it'll either be Ralph or myself on the call. And again, Ralph's the one that got me in the mortgage business. So he is the source of the Nile. So if you just ask me what my number one thing is and you back it up all the way, brother, it goes all the way back to you and the good Lord that uh, – that introduced us on that one fine day, man. I'm, I'm forever grateful. Well, life is beautiful. And yeah. it just shows why you, you, you always help out people who, w whenever you can. Yeah, and, I appreciate and so that. Better. Because of that. So it's a, it's a privilege. So cool. So guys, map out your one thing, map out how to do more of that. And again, if you need some help with that, uh, we'd, we'd love to talk to you about that. Loanofficerstrategycall.com. And we're not going to just talk about it on that call. We're going to go through it and map it out for you. And we'd, uh, we, it, it, I'm, I'm just going to tell you, it's our favorite thing. Of all the stuff we do, that's our favorite thing. And, uh, and, and, and I, I hope it comes across okay to say this. Uh, you know, we're, we're told we're really, really good at it too. So it's, uh, <laughs> I, I don't know a better way to say it, you know, but it's, yeah. it's yep. people, people tell us that it's, 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 it, it, it's been extremely helpful. So uh, I know Corey, Corey said that exact same thing, but he yeah. really appreciate it as we appreciate him. So, uh, so, uh, so cool. Um, hey, if you do us a favor, uh, go on iTunes and give us that five-star review. If you're still listening to this, you must think it's pretty good or you wouldn't have been here for the last 30 minutes. So uh, <laughs> if you give us that five-star review, we appreciate it. Uh, feel free to forward this to your uh, your branch manager. Uh, you know, if you're looking for some help from team and he kind of wants to hear it from the second uh, source, uh, man, we're happy to talk with him too or him or her, uh, her too. And uh, share this with your friends. We really appreciate that. That's what made us... Uh, made us number one is uh, you guys. So uh, Ralph, appreciate you, my brother. Always a privilege. Uh, so nice to spend time with you. Any, any chance I get. Thanks so much for, for bringing me in today. All right. And thank you guys. Uh, you've been on Loan Officer Freedom and uh, we'll see you on your loanofficerstrategycall.com. Thanks again. We appreciate it. And we'll talk to you next week. Bye-bye, everybody. <laughs>